My God's not dead, he's surely alive. Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? My name is Kevin. Welcome to Say Goodnight, Kevin. So today, I was thinking about a little movie, a franchise, in fact, if you will. And that franchise is really what's built my channel. And I'm eternally grateful. I will be grateful in heaven when I'm up there giving my acceptance speech when I'm in heaven, because I think that's how it works. I want to thank God. I want to thank Jesus, I want to thank my family, and I want to thank the God's Not Dead franchise because they're the ones who allowed me to have a YouTube channel that was thriving. I was putting out regular content when I was alive, and God isn't the only one who's not dead. My channel's not dead as well. <laughs> All of that to say, I hope you're okay, but you're the did you know that there's a fifth God's Not Dead movie? I didn't know there was a fourth. I didn't know there was a third. Uh, I've actually been thinking about reviewing the fourth one. I might. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a full on review because I never did it because nobody saw that movie. This movie, I don't know, maybe people will see it. I'm sure it'll come out as a fathom event and I'll go see it. Everybody who watches Fox News will go see it. <laughs> it blows my mind that they're still making God's Not Dead movies. But here we are. This is the world we live in. I was thinking the other day about this franchise and how the first one and the second one came out during the Obama era. The third one came out during the Trump era. The fourth one came out during the Biden era. And then this one will come out, I believe, in September. So that will still be in the Biden era because these are inherently political movies. Though they shouldn't be because uh, truth and justice and Jesus should not be a, po a political statement. What I'm saying is that uh, we have the third movie being the most like docile, the most apolitical, uh, the one that at the end he stops suing the government and says, maybe we should just love each other and we'll just move our church somewhere and you're all invited to come to church and praise the Lord with me. And then <laughs> they return right back to it during the Biden era. And I, I think maybe that's not an accident because these are in and of themselves, these are culture war movies. The desire to make the third one not a culture war movie is in fact, uh, was part of what the director wanted to do. It was very open and honest. I was like, I don't know if we need to create another culture war with one of these movies. I mean, I just said, I just don't think that's necessary. Um, was it necessary for their first one? Maybe, because I mean, you know, a lot of people, you know, felt like convicted, you know, by it. Um, but this is, you know, years later, and this is a different time. Um, and I said, I just don't know if we need to go to, go to war again with people. So what are you gonna do about that? And he goes, well, let me tell you, and you know, um, we had a, a conversation that led to me signing on to do a third movie. So I think this will be the last one. Um, Dave White always makes jokes about me. You know, he's like, well, the spinoff for the four more. And I go, no, no, yes. no done. <laughs> Here's the last one. If you want to see Josh Wheaton and God's Not Dead again, this would be, this would be it. And I think it feels, um, it, it feels, it feels like authentic. And, and um, I do think that John is, is vision. I'm really trusting him. Um, to make something that feels different and feels refreshed. There's a trailer out and the trailer is a month old and I have not taken a look at it and I thought, now's the time, Kevin. Now's the time for you to rise up from the ashes and take a look at a God's Not Dead trailer and that's what we're gonna do today. You guys are gonna come with me. We're gonna have a blast. We're gonna have a blast and a half and, uh, and you're gonna tell me what you think of it in the comments below so I can get that engagement. Let's go, baby. We ever forget. So we begin with Ronald Reagan, which is interesting. The last movie, the one that I didn't review, begins with a uh, speech from Ronald Reagan. So I don't know if they're like, hey, that movie didn't hit. Let's hit it again. All right, one here they are burning the, the American flag. Very timely in the culture war. Be a nation gone under. Now more than ever, Christians must realize that we are being called to deliver hope to a country that's feeling hopeless. Faith begins where your comfort zone ends. Okay. We need to step out into that faith. Okay, all right. Um, first line, we are being called to deliver hope in a, in a country that's more and more hopeless. That's true. I've been slinking around Twitter. I've been posting on Twitter and, and all of my liberal friends hate me now and that's okay. Uh, fortunately, they don't see any of my tweets anyway, so it's fine. Don't worry, I'll, I'll get to making fun of conservatives before long. What he says there, I agree with. If the church has any role in politics, it's to be a place for the hopeless, to be a place for people to go to and escape 
maybe. Uh, basically what movies do, what movies should be, the reason why people complain about movies being too woke, there is a level of separation between church and state. I get it, that's not in the constitution. I get that that was in a letter from Thomas Jefferson or some something like that. What I'm saying about Twitter is that there's so many people on Twitter that I see who are scared. I saw that clip of Rosie O'Donnell, like afraid of what would happen if Trump became president and just so scared. And I get it, I, I get overwhelmed with it. Sometimes I get too into it and, and then I'm like, I need to back off. I need to chill out. The message of the church should really be, I think, that uh, none of this stuff matters. We will be here to deliver hope of Christ, the hope of salvation to the world. And there are political pundits and, and people out there who, who are called to do different things. I agree with the hope thing. People feel hopeless because of this importance that people have put on government and on the presidency, you go to church and that importance remains. People are still putting that emphasis. Uh, I think that there is a time and a place for that. And I think that offering like, hey, we're still the church. It doesn't matter what the government does. We will continue to be the church and we will continue to offer hope even if they uh, come after us, which they're not going to today. All right. They're not doing that today. We're six weeks out from election day and a lot of folks have lost hope in the future of our country. We must maintain okay. a wall of separation between church and state. Oh, that guy. Oh, Religion no. has no place in the public oh, no. square. <laughs> I say one thing and then immediately the trailer like is making the bad guy say the thing that I just said. Now I'm the bad guy in a God's Not Dead movie. Great. Once they bankrupt our country, they will have complete control. Where did we go wrong, Lord? Okay, so... <laughs> The thing that I get upset at when I'm scrolling through Twitter, the thing that like, not upset, I'm fine, but the thing that really makes me discouraged and feeling like the, the world is uh, coming to an end is when I see stupid people, or at least uh, pretending to be stupid people, misinterpreting in in on purpose uh, what like Trump says. And I'm like, okay, but that's not what's being said here, is it? Yeah, it is because he, he wants fascism. We'll, we'll live in a fascist state if Trump gets elected. It doesn't look good. And it's that inability to separate yourself from the situation and say, all right, what is their real motivation here? This is that, like this sort of like, we're making backroom deals so we can bankrupt the country. If that's how cynical we are going to be, then you've got to admit that that's what they're doing on the right as well. I don't think that's true. I'm, as a cynical person, I am not cynical enough to believe either one of those things. And I think that people on the left really believe that they are trying to make a better world by taking from the rich and giving to the poor. This Robin Hood fantasy sort of thing that they think that wealth is some sort of pie. There's limited wealth and it's accumulated at the top. And so they need to like redistribute that. They really do think that they're helping people by doing that. I have to believe that's what people think. And I think then the disagreement should be what is the best way. I think both both sides, both sides really want to help people. And I think the disagreements, what bothers me is that nobody can just have the conversation of, I get it, you wanna help people, I wanna help people. How do we get there? I feel like at one point these conversations were had, but it's not as effective, especially in a meme generated society. I know I'm preaching here. I get it. I'm going to hate myself as an editor later, but uh, I, th I just think that w we've just so lost the plot. And this movie already, this trailer, which I'm judging only 44 seconds into the trailer, is just perpetuating that. It's this right wing idea of they're trying to take over everything. And if we as Christians don't get in there, if we as Christians aren't in charge anymore, then we won't be able to worship and we have to be in charge so we can force Christianity into the laws. And I, I don't agree with that. If you're talking about freedom, if you're like, let's make government smaller, whatever we can do. Um, but still anybody who's a Christian, who's trying to be in charge of everybody, you're, you're misguided. I think He's someone who can light a People fire in the me. motors a preacher. He helped on those education hearings. I've been hired to manage your campaign for Congress. I'm not a politician. If you don't take on this fight, we could lose everything. I found someone to... Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, if David A.R. White doesn't run for Congress, then the entire society is going to collapse. That actually, you've convinced me. I'm voting for him. I'm gonna write him in. My next guest is a oh, for Congress. Huckabee. You're gonna get a lot of questions about your faith. People are looking for more spiritual and moral leadership in Washington. You're making God an easy target for them, Pastor. God's not the target, Lottie. Our country is. God's just standing in their way. 
Isn't that the Trump line? <laughs> I won't stop until your moral high ground crumbles beneath your feet. You don't win unless you play by their rules. I feel like I have two options. I can either do the things my faith asks me not to, or I lose this race. It's like God keeps putting these impossible mountains in front of me. Perhaps God put those mountains in front of you to oh. show that they can be moved. Oh, we pray for Here we you, go. guys. Oh, yes! We try. This contest is about shaping the future of our nation. Keep your boy in line. Because like his God, I can give it, and I can take it away. How do you know it's God? In God we trust. Reverend Hill, your beliefs are a textbook example of Christian nationalism. Whenever anyone of faith promotes a policy that you don't like, you label them a Christian nationalist. We need to stand up. Send a message to Washington. Tell them you're not ready to give that power up. You have the power to change things. Not me, not him, you. In God we trust. And without God, democracy will not and cannot long endure. No system will work without morality of some sort. Society will crumble, uh, whether it's democracy or not. And in fact, democracy itself marginalizes the uh, smallest voices, like people who believe what I believe. I'll never get what I want, and uh, I've learned to accept that, uh, and that's the world we live in. Okay, so that movie looks awful. It certainly looks like a return to form, something that I could really sink my teeth into in reviewing. So I do look forward to that coming to theaters September 12th. What a wonderful world we live in. And I'm excited about, um, you know, uh, just more God's Not Dead stuff. Maybe I'll review another movie one day. I'm excited about all of the political things that I've said in this, and I look forward to you guys hating me for it. And uh, you know what? But I'm not going to back down. I'm the real victim here. All right. Well, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. And I will talk to you soon. Good night. Hey, everybody, before you leave. So um, if you're just sitting there listening or watching my video as if it's a podcast, boy, do I have something special for you. Throughout the making of this video, I went on two specific rants that I eventually felt like were too long and didn't really uh, help with the flow or the pacing of the video. So I cut them out. But then I was like, let's just pop them in at the end. And uh, if you want to listen, you can. And if you don't want to listen, I understand. That'll be my catchphrase. Uh, so here's rant number one. I think I find it interesting to see the religious conservative interpretation of what's going on or what the left's motivation is. My thought is, okay, they're, they're bankrupting the country, but they're not doing that on purpose. Or at least if they are doing it on purpose, I see it as like a play for control, a play for like dependency of the population. There's really nothing religious about it, but I think what the reality is, is that, you know, you have this idea that, oh, if we promise to help people, then they're going to vote to be helped. Even if that is a short-term help, even if it's, you know, I'm not, I'm f so far from being socialist. And so it helps in the short term. I think that a lot of people can be helped financially from that, but it doesn't ultimately encourage people to succeed. It doesn't encourage innovation. It doesn't encourage advancement. And so I see all of that and I have my interpretation as to why people are doing that. But to, to have like this vision that I don't even think about, the religious side of like, they're trying to bankrupt the country so that they can get at the Christians. At least that's the interpretation that I'm taking from this is such a bizarre notion that people would be thinking this much about Christianity. I get why religion becomes part of and has become part of politics because of the abortion issue, because that it's so ingrained and it's so much part of, you know, the people trying to preserve life and the Catholic Church is against abortion. And, and so you have a religious aspect to the abortion issue. But if you take that and set that aside, I, I just have never thought about the economics of the left being at all connected to the church or Christianity. And I still don't think that, but it's funny to see this trailer kind of attempt to conflate all of those things. It's fascinating. Well, there you have it. That uh, rant that was so annoying that even my dog had to jump in and tell me to stop. Uh, pretty good. Well, uh, if you like that, then check out this next rant that I went on as well. I've just always felt a little uneasy about how Christians approach politics and how important it is, especially in the United States, of getting a Christian president and getting somebody who reflects my values 
in terms of uh, faith, when you look at how Jesus approached these sorts of things, he's always talking about the kingdom of heaven. And you look at the time of Jesus and how there was no Christian uh, leaders. There was nobody in politics who was on their side and they were an outlier. And in the United States, we've never had that situation where we're an outlier. Anytime there's any hint of anything close to that, there's so many people who are saying, we've got it. We as a nation, we as Christians have to get involved in politics and use the political system to fight against people who would make laws that are different than the laws that we have. Now, I mean, obviously, if you're talking about freedom, freedom from being told you can't practice your religion, but freedom to be left alone and freedom to tell people what to do are two different things. In the Bible, it says when people die, it's okay to grieve, but grieve not as people who have no hope. So if that's the case, then why would God say, yes, death affects you, but not in the same way, but then it not be that, yes, government affects you, but not in the same way. It's the same logic. That's how I see things. I know I'm gonna get a lot of people who uh, disagree with me. I probably would have once disagreed with me as well. That doesn't mean that I was once wrong and now right. Maybe I'm wrong now. I see a lot of people saying, if you're a real Christian, you'll vote for this person. If you're a real Christian, you'll vote for this other person. And I, I think that at this stage of my life, if you're a real Christian, you will not depend on who's in government to determine your faith. I have other thoughts about how moral or good it is for Christians to even be involved in being in charge of other people. But at least if you believe that there is some sort of afterlife, understanding that this life right now and who's in charge should not be affecting your faith. Wow, Kevin, that was one of the most bravest things I've ever heard. Amazing. Guys, uh, if you like those little rants um, at the end of my videos, maybe I'll do more if I end up having more rants. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I, I'm i just taking a little more casual approach to my videos lately. I am I'm think that YouTube has moved in that direction. And, uh, and uh, why not me? It's easier to... Uh, to get my thoughts out there than to try to do a bunch of wild and wacky videos and then I could put out more content and you guys can enjoy more. Uh, I'm just, you know, that's life. Life goes on. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Good night.